All right, um, you guys will just bear with me. Um, I've got a cold, and um, I just want to get this thing done and up there for you guys. So this is not Academy Award winning stuff. I'm on page 34 of your textbook, question number 12, the data relating to Quick Change Oil Company. Um, and I have data for 20 days. So um, I'm going to work this in Excel, which is a pretty good way for you guys to do it, um, if, you, if you can. I've typed my 20 data observations into a column and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select them and I'm going to sort them from smallest to largest. Once they're sorted then I can move on and determine what else I'm going to do. Um, next thing that it wants me to do is it wants me to determine how many classes. And to do that I'm going to use that 2 to the K rule which sounds a lot more technical than it is. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply 2 by itself until the answer is a number that is greater than the total number of data points. So I'm going to say 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16 times 2 is 32. All right, 32 is bigger than 20, so I'm going to stop there. Now I'm just going to go back and I'm going to count. I'm going to say I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 twos, or 2 to the 5th power. So for A, I'm going to say the number of classes is equal to 5. If I had had more data points, I would have kept multiplying 2 by itself until the answer of 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 gave me a number that was larger than the total number of data points. All right, now it wants to know B. What is my interval? And the interval is simply nothing, is nothing more than the class width. That's how wide or how many data points I want to jam into each individual class. And the formula that we use for that is we take the range, whoops, we take the range of the data and we divide it by the number of classes. Well, how do we find the range? The range of a data set is simply the highest data point minus the lowest data point. Well, I've already s sorted my data, so I know that 51 is my lowest and 98 is my highest. So in this case, I'm going to say 98 minus 51 equals whatever that is. Nice, I didn't get my calculator out. 98 minus 51 is equal to 47 down here. Now the rest of the formula is highest data point minus loaded, lowest data point divided by the number of classes. Well, up here, right, I just said that my number of classes was 5. So 47 divided by 5. And last time I checked, 47 divided by 5 was equal to 9 point four. So the rule with class interval is always round up. And I know that rounding 9.4 up to 10 breaks every rule you've ever learned in math. But in statistics, we're not talking about math so much as we are about fit and whether or not your data is going to fit into the, the classes that you have. So if you have anything after the decimal point, even if it was 9.01, I'd round my class interval up to the next whole number. So now I have a class interval of 10. So that gives me B. So hopefully we're in good shape by now because in C it says, what is the lower limit I would recommend for the first class? Well, my lowest data point is 51. 
and I could use the 51, but it's nice to have a nice even number. So I'm going to look at my lowest data point, a 51, and I'm going to say my lower limit of my first class is going to be equal to 50. That way I know that my first data point fits. Um, it's a nice round number, and now when I create my classes, they've got nice, even beginning and ends to them. You'll see this is not a highly specific math kind of thing. It's more the idea of where does everything go, does everything fit, and we're trying to make the data make some sense as opposed to just these 20 numbers I have over here in this column that really don't mean much to me. So now I'm going to go through and I'm going to create five classes and what I'm going to have is I'm going to have my class limits. And my class limits are always going to start with my lowest class limit and then it's going to be from there I'm going to add my class width of 10 and it's going to go to 60. The next one then is going to start with 60 and go to 70. See how by using 50 it came out nice and neat? Now I'm going to go 70 whoops, to 80. I'm going to go 80 to 90. See, I'm just adding 10 every time. And now I'm going to go 90 to 100. Now, remember that with class limits, this class right here of 50 to 60 includes the data points that are 50 up to but not including 60. This one is 60 up to but not including 70. 70 up to but not including 80. Because remember when you create your classes they have to be continuous meaning they run 50 to 60, 60 to 70, there are no gaps and each data point only fits in one place. All right, now I have class limits. I'm going to make that column a little bit wider. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, and because I've sorted my data and it looks all nice, I can go ahead and I can say how many of my data points are 50 up to but not including 60. Well, over here I have 1, 2, 3, 4 of them. All right, so I have 4 there. 60 up to but not including 70. 60 but not up to from 60 but not including 70 is going to be 6. Now I have 70. Remember 70 is going to come down here. 70 up to but not including 80 is going to give me another 6. Now I want 80 up to but not including 90. Well, there's only one there. And now 90 up to but not including 98 is going to give me 3. The secret to this is that in order for me to check myself, I should have put every one of these data points into just one of these classes. So this column of numbers right here should total, should total, if I did it right, should total um, 20. So we'll say 4 plus 12 plus 4 equals 20. So that's how I know that I've got my, I'm going to put some little, little border right there. So my total number is equal to 20, so then I, I know I'm good. This column right here is the frequency. Right? It's just telling me how many of my data points fall into each class. Now I need to find out what is my relative frequency. Well, relative frequency is simply relative to all of the data points, all 20, what percentage or what proportion fall in the first class? Well, it's relative to the whole. So it's 4 out of or divided by 20, isn't it? 
Whoops, except that's not April 20th. Format my cell real quick. Sorry. There we go. It's 4 out of 20, isn't it? And here, it's 6 out of 20. Correct? Whoops. It's 6 out of 20. Here, it's 6 out of 20, 1 out of 20, and 3 out of 20. You see, all I've done is I've taken 4 divided by 20, 6 divided by 20, 6 divided by 20, 1 divided by 20, 3 divided by 20. Just like this had to add up to 20, the number of data points, this should represent 100% of my data. So the question is here, does this cell, if I add them all up, will it equal 1? To the magic of that cell, yes, 1 or 100%. Now, last but not least, the um, author asks us in E, he says, Com comment on the shape of the frequency distribution, also determine the relative frequency distribution. So we've done that. Um, what we want to know is, if you think that the fewest, the, the smallest concentration is in this 80 to 90, um, the greatest concentration is right here in the middle, 60 to 80. So if we were to graph it and make a bar chart out of it, then what it would look like, and I'm going to do that for you, it's not required, but just give you the idea of what we're talking about when we talk about shape, is I would insert just a simple column chart and see how in each one of those classes now, it's showing us what kind of what the shape is. Um, if you were just trying to take a look and wanted to look at it graphically, we could kind of look at this graph and say, hey, it looks like the second and the third class, which is the 60 to 70, and the 70 to 80 is the biggest. The fourth class there of 80 to 90 is the smallest. Um, the la very last class, the fifth one, is about half of these two bigger ones. So we're beginning to get the idea that data, once it's plotted and organized, it takes on some type of shape. Hope this makes things a little bit clearer about how we construct a frequency and a relative frequency distribution. Um, and I will be talking to you guys soon.